Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity, your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. 
See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the furthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor together, a great company. They shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim as my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, He who scattered Israel will give him and will keep him as a shepherd of, flock, of a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden. They shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. We will read the psalm responsively by verse. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts! My soul has a desire and longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. The sparrow has found a house, and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young. By the side of your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are they who dwell in your house. They will always be praising you. Happy are the people whose strength that is in you, whose hearts are set on the pilgrim's way. Those who go through the desolate valley will find it a place of springs, for the early rains have covered it with pools of water. They will climb from height to height, and the God of gods will reveal himself in Zion. Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Hearken, O God of Jacob. For one day in your courts is better than a thousand in my own room, and to stand at the threshold of the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. No good thing will the Lord withhold from those who walk with integrity. O Lord of hosts, happy are they who put their trust in you. A reading from the letter of Paul to the church at Ephesus. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world, to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that, with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe. The word of the Lord. Thank you.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, and they asked, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. <clears throat> when they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. A prayer for the new year. <clears throat> At the stroke of midnight, in the midwinter cold, the new year begins in darkness. When the morning breaks, the world will appear, unchanged, gray, and still. With long months of short days yet to come, still, it is new, all around us is a slow resurrection, not the turn of a calendar page, <clears throat> but the stir of seeds sheltered deep within the earth, waiting to climb in the warmth of spring. We move forward with faith to the hope for, but unseen. Let this be a year of healing as we come together stronger, a new understanding of what it means to be whole. Let this year be a year of mercy, forgiving our failures, seeing strength in our scars. Let this be a year of clarity, finding harmony in our differences and unity in our purpose. Let this be a year of courage. Let us dare to pour out our cups of kindness, asking nothing in return. Let this be a year of remembrance, reflection, reunion, and restoration. Let this be a year of illumination, of switches flipped in long empty classrooms in office buildings, of candles burning at overcrowded dinner tables, of fireworks painting the sky in celebration. In this dark beginning, we reach towards the light. Dr. Jill Biden. <laughs> Happy New Year. How many times in the last nine months have you heard the following exclamation? I cannot wait for 2020 to be over. I'll be honest, I've said it a few times. Sometimes I said it tongue in cheek. Other times I was being absolutely serious. <clears throat> 2020 was a really tough year. It's one of those periods in life where years down the road, we're going to look back and ask ourselves, did that actually happen? <clears throat> it's wishful and naive thinking to assume that just because 2020 is now behind us, that things will suddenly be better 
in 2021. Things like the pandemic disappearing or our political issues being solved. It would be great if there were dramatic and drastic changes, but we all know that the upcoming year and the progress that will happen this year is a marathon, not a sprint. <clears throat> so this holiday season, I pondered the year that lies ahead of us, and I could not help but hold my dreams for 2021 side by side with the Christmas story. It seems too perfect that a vaccine was released a few weeks before Christmas. It signified a turning point in the pandemic. It's comforting to hold the hope that we have for ending COVID side by side with the Christmas story's message of hope. However, as I was looking at the Christmas story, I realized something. Did you ever realize how fast the Christmas story moves? The story unfolds quickly in a few short chapters, and it completely alters the course of human history. <clears throat> Think about it for a second. <clears throat> you know the story. The entire Roman Empire is uprooted and people are forced to travel to their hometowns. A very pregnant Mary rides on a donkey all the way to Bethlehem with Joseph. She gives birth in a stable. The heavens are torn open as angels appear to shepherds. The shepherds visit the baby. Then it continues into the Epiphany story and it gets even more dramatic. The heavens themselves realign themselves, and a new star rises. It's noticed far off in the east, and foreign astrologers follow this star all the way to Judea. All this is coupled with dreams, signs from God, orders from tyrannical kings, elaborate gifts, more dreams, the wise men sneak back home, Herod is furious, the holy family flees to Egypt, until Herod dies. All of this drama, all of these events in a few short chapters. It's almost as if God is slamming the brakes on human history and pulling a hard U-turn. Only it wasn't like that. We might do well to reflect on a much longer salvation history. One that begins not with the birth of Jesus and a star, or the Annunciation, or even the prophetic messages. The story of our salvation begins at the very beginning of creation. It begins with creation because God's desire from the very get-go is that all of creation would be united to God in love. The entirety of our faith story unfolds from there. It's fully achieved in Jesus Christ. God through the Holy Spirit, has been continually molding and shaping the world to make this original dream a reality. The events of the Incarnation, the Christmas story, they're dramatic, they're full of excitement and action. However, the longer story of God's Incarnation and a salvation plan that starts with the world, starts with the word, let there be light, from there, it moves through all the scriptures into the present age, down to each and every single one of us. And we can find hope in this. In fact, we get to participate in this great plan of salvation. We are guided by the Holy Spirit to be Christ's hands and feet. We get to shape the world around us into God's deepest desires. So 2021 is now here, and perhaps for the first few months, it's going to see like, seem like more of that old waiting game, <clears throat> only this isn't the same sort of waiting game and preparation that we did in Advent. In fact, we're on the other side of our salvation story. Isaiah's words, arise, shine, from your, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has arisen on you. These words are a call to action. The Savior has been born. 
He died and rose again. And so we must share that good news through our words and actions to make God's dream a reality. <clears throat> so perhaps on this leg of our journey, we might learn a lesson from the Magi. There's a long journey ahead in 2021. It's going to require our patience. It will require love for ourselves and for our neighbors. It will be a long, slow, and difficult beginning of the year, but we must never forget that through it, we are guided by the light of God. We move to this light, not in some dramatic, instant change of course. Instead, we move and follow the light, one divinely inspired choice after another. And we call that formation. <clears throat> this is certainly countercultural. We live in a world of instant gratification. Drastic shifts, quick changes, they're basically a way of life for us. However, maybe this patient, faith-directed, forward movement is what we Christians have to offer our neighbors. And so I wonder, what might 2021 look like if we took this slower but faithful approach? We can imagine it. We might find ourselves being more mindful and centered on the everyday small choices that add up to major changes. Changes such as choosing to delay large group gatherings so that we can care for others. Listening to someone we disagree with, yet still loving them. Choosing relation relationship over a culture that often cancels people out or blocks them taking extra time for love of self and honoring the divine image that is embedded in each and every single one of us. Our lives themselves would serve as guiding lights at this point so that others may also find the Christ. So my sincerest hope for 2021 is that we will be together again. I hope that next Christmas, when we can gather for Christmas worship, We'll come to St. Albans in our churches. We'll hold candles as we sing Silent Night together. I hope we can visit, share, feast, and celebrate with one another soon. What a dramatic and holy shift that would be. So Happy New Year. It might be dark now, but we will reach the light. Step by step by step. Amen. <clears throat>we profess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Amen. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for the bishops in Southern Ohio, Kenneth and Nettie, for this gathering and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for Stephen, Anne, Sam, Ben, and Maria as they continue to live and work in a place of danger. For Penny, Jerry, Elaine, Scott, Garth, Levi, Ben, Tilda, Earl, Harry, John, Mike, Mary, Teddy, Russell, Rebecca. For Jake as he enters military service, and all suffering in any way from COVID-19, for all medical workers and caregivers involved with their care. I ask your prayers for all the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers of thanksgiving for the blessings of this life, especially Karen and the Choral Scholars, for blessing us with beautiful music during Advent, Christmas, and COVID-19 times. For volunteers, including Eileen and Jerry Becknell, Larry Burton, Steve and Liz Cartwright, Carolyn Christie, Lane and Robert Howarth, Penny Shika, Mary-Kate Levins and Tom Mack, Ann Lauder, Andy Labita, and Reverend Devon Rogers and Ernestine Ujai, who delivered Christmas poinsettias to parishioners at home. I ask your prayers of thanksgiving for the birth this week of Arthur Rogers and for his parents, Dominica and Zach. I ask your prayers of thanksgiving for Harris Wood and Louisa Shields, in, whom, in, who, in whose honors the altar flowers are given today in God's glory. I ask your prayers of thanksgiving for all those blessings we now name either silently or aloud. Pray that we may recognize our blessings and practice gratitude for them. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. <clears throat> Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. <clears throat> Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. Share that peace with all you meet.
Well, good morning and welcome to St. Albans. It's wonderful to have you all joining us on uh, Facebook Live this morning. If you're a first time guest to St. Albans, a very special and warm welcome to you. Uh, please be sure to fill out the guest book so we can let you know uh, what is happening here at the church. Uh, speaking of what's happening here at the church, this week uh, we have two worship services during the weekdays, Monday Compline at 8 p.m. and then uh, Wednesday morning prayer at 8 a.m. Uh, both of these services will be live streamed over Facebook. <clears throat> uh, speaking of morning prayer, this year for morning prayer, uh, each Wednesday we're going to pick a different saint or a feast day that uh, is being commemorated in the life of the church. So this coming week is Epiphany, and we'll do the readings and the prayers for Epiphany on uh, Wednesday for morning prayer. Also with Epiphany, uh, our St. Nicholas Day bags and Advent at Home bags were so popular that we made Epiphany at Home bags. You can pick these up on the uh, church breezeway. They're in a little plastic container on the table. Um, and in these bags, there's activities to do with your family and also to uh, help you learn about the, the Feast of Epiphany. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as an offering and sacrifice to God. Stand. 
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, We await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and the blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ. (laughs) And bring us to that heavenly country where with Alban and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Mary and Joseph, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas. And the blessing of the holy and undivided Trinity, be with you and remain with you always. Amen.
Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God.